An annual total of more than 250 million tires are utilized all over the world for a variety of functions, ranging from transportation to industrial applications. Tires on a vehicle are essential because they allow the car to travel more smoothly and effectively. Surprisingly, however, they cannot be produced without this ingredient, which is a white liquid that has a sticky consistency and is responsible for the production of millions of tires every year. On the other hand, have you ever pondered the manufacturing process of tires? To better understand the manufacturing process for tires, we went to one of the major producers of natural rubber in the world. Although the wheel has been used for thousands of years, placing rubber on the inner edge of the wheel is a comparatively recent development. It was in the early 18th century that natural rubber was initially utilized to cover wheels made of steel or wood. Since rubber wore out quickly, its future did not appear hopeful until 1839, when Charles Goodyear discovered vulcanization. Vulcanization is a process in which rubber is mixed with sulfur and then treated to heat and pressure, which improves the rubber's flexibility and strength. The development of pneumatic tires, which could better absorb road bumps and provide enhanced grip, was made possible and made possible by this innovation. There is only one point of contact between the vehicle and the ground, and that is the tire only. Over the previous century, automobile tires have undergone significant development. Although synthetic rubber is also utilized in the production of tires, natural rubber is the primary raw material that these tires are made from. The polymers present in crude oil are used to produce synthetic rubber. It is estimated that about 250 million tires are manufactured annually by plants that are huge, efficient, and manned by qualified workers. Natural rubber is produced in India, which is one of the top producers in the world. Since about a century ago, they have been cultivating natural rubber trees. Rubber is derived from a milky liquid known as latex, which is formed in the bark of the rubber tree. The purpose of this substance, which is made up of water and rubber molecules, is to shield the tree from the presence of insects. If you want to get it, you must only cut into the bark first. A couple of millimeters more into the wood could be enough to destroy the tree if you continue to go deeper. To prevent the latex from coagulating, fresh latex is placed into barrels that contain ammonia. During a manufacturing process, it goes through a transformation that turns it into solid rubber. After an expression time of 10 hours, the flexible latex is sent through a series of rollers to extract most excess liquid. This process is repeated. The surplus water is squeezed out of the rubber and the presses form the sheets. However, to produce latex it is necessary to dry it thoroughly. To accomplish this, the latex sheets are heated over firewood for three days. Once this process is complete, the sheets can be referred to as rubber. In 100 years, they have kept the procedures that they utilize the same. The tire manufacturer receives natural rubber as its raw material. They have been producing tires for automobiles in this factory since the year 1972. Using a tire forming machine, many layers of rubber are wrapped around a metal drum to create a tire for an automobile. When the various components of the tire are transported to the forming machine, a professional assembler cuts and arranges the strips to shape the multiple elements of the tire to the specifications that have been specified. It is necessary to harden natural rubber since it is too elastic and flexible to be used in tire manufacturing. To produce tires, rubber is combined with a wide variety of other components to give it the necessary strength. Approximately 10 to 15 distinct components are utilized in the production of this contemporary tire. These components include natural and synthetic rubber, chemical additives, steel, sulfur, zinc oxide, textile fibers, and carbon black pigment that are all included. These components are combined in enormous mixers while subjected to high temperatures and intense pressures. Utilizing these components results in a more durable tire that is resistant to wear. When it comes to the various components of the tire, there are multiple formulations. Regardless of the circumstances, the end product is a mass of sticky rubber rolled into sheets by the machines to await further meeting and processing. It takes a little more than two minutes for a carpet of rubber compound to emerge, which is then prepared to become the sidewalls and object. Steel belts coated with rubber are put on top of the layer. These strengthen both the tire and its protection against punctures. The skin, which is the component that grips the road, is now required for the casing. At this point, the rubber carpet extracted from the cutting machine is being introduced into an extruder. To give the rubber the desired shape, it is first heat a rubberized tread of a tire. Rollers are incorporated into the machine and they are responsible for applying hot rubber to both sides of the fabric. In steel threads to the layer, the layer is molded around both sides of the fabric is produced as a result of this process, which will be utilized to reinforce the tire. Because rubber by itself is not sufficient to form a tire, the fabric layer is required to do this. However, you creation of channels that allow for air ventilation. Attaching finded and then driven through a die plate. 
after the rubber has cooled is then cut to the dimensions that are specified. The next step is to roll many steel wires. You won't be able to travel very far with this. You will need a substantial inner lining called the tire casing. To accomplish this, the sheet of polyester is loaded into a machine that has hot rollers placed throughout it. It is commonly referred to as the second layer. Two layers are securely wrapped around an airtight liner. They come to rest at an angle and remain grouped. During the manufacture of tires, this results in a simultaneously to create the bead, the tire component that gives the essential strength to remain on the rim. A rubber wrap is applied to the cables after they have been arranged in the desired arrangement by the machines. Another machine creates rings of the proper size for the rim by wrapping the bead material into rings. It is now time to begin construction on the tire. To position the two bead rings on the drum, a specialized spinning drum is utilized. The following step involves the placement of a piece of hermetic rubber that will serve as an air chinger. Following the wrapping of the rubber around the bead on both sides by the machine, the rubber is then retracted. The inner part of the tire, also known as the skeleton, is finished with this. Beginning with rubber strips that are implanted in steel rings, the process of assembling the outer layers is done individually. Following that, thin pieces of rubber are positioned. To produce a progressive effect, the automated system rolls them with the appropriate amount of tension. It is time for them to go on to the next stage, the tire tread. A rubber machine is used to apply it to the layer, compressed air is used to inflate the tire to form it, and then all the layers are cemented together. To manufacture the tread out of rubber, three distinct rubber compositions are required. After being shaped by the structures, the three rubber flows are then introduced into a die, which combines them into a single flow. Paint rollers are used to apply to the sidewalls, the machine rolls the edge of the tread. Now they have what is known as a green tire in the that may be closed with a clamp, much lower than 80 degrees Celsius. Throughout its time spent in the heated, compressed mold, the rubber undergoes a chemical reaction known as vulcanization, which allows it to transition from a substance to vertical stripes of varying colors. During the processing, like a massive sandwich. The process in question is known as vulcanization. Pressure molds the rubber and transfers the tread design to the tire when heated to 100 ismus, a tire that has not yet been cured and does not have a tread pattern. The tire is positioned inside a mold. It is a coating system that identifies the components. To apply the tread rubber that is weak and sticky to one that is strong and elastic. The tread rubber is cut to size using a blade and any excess rubber is removed or trimmed away. As a result of the final checks, it has been shown that the shape of the tire is consistent and that it is proper geometrically. From the trees to the solid wheels, these rubber tires are ready to hit the road when they come off the production line with their sturdy wheels. So this is the end of today's video. Do you like it? Kindly give your valuable response in our comment section below and remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more exciting and informative videos.